Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan here for another episode of Inside the Birds as we continue our positional preview. We're going to get into quarterbacks. We haven't done that yet as we finish off offense tonight. We'll, we're going to combine quarterbacks and tight ends and wrap it up there, get in some news, uh, talk a little bit about what we learned from the latest Q&A, Adam. There were some interesting mm. things uh, mm. that were uh, said in that podcast. But you know what struck me today is that, Adam, this is the this episode here is the 356th podcast episode from Inside the Birds. How do you know that? <laughs> well, it's, we uh, every time uh, we put it up on Anchor, we have to say season and number. So it, oh, uh, yeah, I didn't do I didn't use an abacus here. I, I'm just right. go <laughs> with what the computer says. So, um, and that doesn't count just our show. That counts like uh, grilling the birds, Q and A, sure. um, right. live stream, everything. But 356 shows have mm. appeared on the Inside the Birds podcast platform. I think that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. we uh, Since we started in the spring of well, – wait a minute. So we didn't – so actually – but we've we've done over 400 if you count the ones before we went to Anchor, right? Correct. I'm kind of talking about when we um, kind of restarted and refocused what the, what the podcast would be and then went to Anchor, right, in the summer gotcha. of okay. 2009 – the summer before the 2019 season. Right. right. So, uh, right. yeah. By the way, not even including YouTube, we have, we have over 2.2 million downloads. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So we, we appreciate the support. In fact, we have this huge show. Maybe I think our, if it's not our most traffic show, it's one of the top of all time. Two shows ago, right? We almost, it was one of the, one of the most heavily traffic show for the first 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. We, well, yeah, we uh, actually, we have a show that's probably going to hit 18 to 18 to 20,000 uh, listens and views. It's, which yeah. is, Enormous for a single Eagle show. It's uh, we appreciate the support, folks. We appreciate you spreading the word, uh, and then obviously bringing Q and A and uh, Quentin and uh, Jason have really helped us get over the moon here. It's been terrific. Really appreciate. It's it. awesome. Yeah. So we thank Q and A. We thank Derek Gunn and Trey Thomas and Greg yeah. Cosell and everybody who's anybody who's come on ITB TV where we've had Joe Banner and Brian Westbrook and so many others. So uh, it's a real testament. Uh, to everybody who's who's been a part, Jamal Jackson was a great fill in for our pregame show. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love those with with um, did he Trey fill in for Cosell. Oh yeah, yes. yeah, because Trey and Jamal were incredible. Oh my god, those shows we did from um, the brewery. What's that place called? Uh, from Goose Island Brew House. Goose Island, yeah, did, phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, and and if you haven't seen those folks, if you're because we know a lot of people, we check our traffic from last fall. People go back and watch our older shows. I mean, yeah. I do that with podcasts. I like listen to. Um, when, when I, I was talking about that wrestling podcast, mm -hmm. um, 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff, I like going back and listening to older shows. But you could see the backdrop that we had for those those um, those evening shows. How great of a view was that? It was fantastic. The thing I'll always remember about having Jamal Jackson and Trey Thomas doing a show together and kind of not always seeing eye to eye on offensive line yeah. terminology and, and blocking, um, they reminded me a little bit, and you, you kind of – I'm have to be our age to understand like the the Waldorf and Statler from the Muppets the two old guys who would yeah. sit up in the balcony <laughs> and just kind of like make fun of everybody else and argue yeah, amongst yeah. each other that was fun so yeah um it's just amazing that we've done we're by the time we hit the season in September with all of the shows that we do on this platform we'll be up close to 400 so I think that'll be a great milestone when we hit that 400th podcast episode so again big thanks to not only all the, the the talent that has helped us make this but the listeners the people who give us great feedback even the people who rip us i don't care thank you for listening you know they keep uh, listening though you know what? They disagree keep listening. that's yeah. fine if, if you hit me I'm, I'm cool with it uh, thanks for listening and i appreciate it we do our best we're honest we're candid we harbor no biases we think we just tell you people what we think and yeah. um you know we we've we've got something special so i i just wanted to take a second to appreciate everybody including our great listeners um we're going to get into a few things one of the, one of the things that stood out from the q a show uh adam was that someone asked them both to talk about avante maddox and andre dillard and clearly you know dillard's been a subject of our own podcast recently as we did the offensive line preview in our last pod so if you haven't checked that out um it's funny before i even say what q a talked about it was interesting uh, I, I even showed you the picture of the Eagles themselves tweeting out their uh, first team offensive line from OTAs and Jordan Maialata, right. Was, was the guy who was there at left tackle. They didn't them, like walking off the field in 
in their normal order. And Mylotta was the person who was, you know, on the left side there at the end. Um, do we make too much of that? Of course not. But it was just very interesting to see the yeah. Kelsey, Sayamalu, and, and then Mylotta, and of course uh, Lane Johnson funny. also. Yeah, I- I'm waiting for someone to tweet out. Wait a minute, boy, Mylotta looks heavier. You know, you stuff like that. <laughs> but she, look, hey, when we when uh, when we talked about Derek Barnett mm-hmm. uh, last fall, I was like, man, he looked thin, and we found out that he was thin. So, right. you know, bottom line is though, uh, when it comes to the Eagles. They're going to be an interesting team because they've got so many subplots. We'll get to the Earth situation, tight end, and how's Jalen Hurts going to look this this year, quarterback. So many backup jobs open. This is a good thing. As you said a couple shows ago, mm-hmm. for the first time in many years, they actually have some pretty interesting training camp out. Oh, yeah, there's going to be really good competition, good yeah. battles, left tackle just being one of them. Yeah. Um, so, so Jason, who was an assistant wide receivers coach on the team last year, Jason Avant, uh, was asked to really kind of give his thought as a, as a person who was up close and had, had a really good bird's eye view of both players, no pun intended. Mm-hmm. And I, I will say he didn't break any, he, he, but it's good to hear like someone who you respect kind of echo the same sentiment that we've put out there. And that's Jason feels that Andre Dillard's a really good guy, um, great family guy, good person, good feet. Left, he said his feet, his hands, his get off is all there, but he says he's just not big enough and strong enough, right? To play he, at this point, he feels to play at a really high level left tackle in the NFL, especially when you compare him to Jordan Mailata, who is immense. All right, did you tell him you're immense? Did you ever see that? Uh, the uh, the was King of Queens, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, I actually saw a taping of that in uh, two. Oh, I remember that, that's right. Oh, that's one. Right. I, in fact, you could hear me on the laugh track because I did it on purpose. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, that's another, that, that'll go in our, our uh, once what? we once we get done OTAs and we talk about some of the stupid things we've done in our career. Right. That My wife's still pissed off at me for acting like a fool and trying to get on the laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you remember that show, Arthur and Doug are always arguing. And in one episode, Arthur is actually talking to a telemarketer and, and giving the telemarketer like way too much time. And Doug says, did you tell him you live in my basement? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did you tell him you're immense? <laughs> Do you think Jerry Stiller was his – I thought he was way better on Seinfeld. And maybe some people might disagree with me. I thought he was great on both. I mean, he was a little bit – I know how they're similar in Seinfeld. They're both like the, the you know, loud, uh, obnoxious type of guys. But – I really thought he was hysterical in King of Queens. To be honest okay. with you, I, I, I thought he's more sedate. To be honest with you, on King, King of Queens. really? Wow! Yeah. Uh, have you yeah. seen everyone? <laughs> I've seen probably maybe fifty episodes of that show. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, not I, like Seinfeld. I'm ridiculous with yeah, Seinfeld. He didn't I'm, scream. Yeah. I agree. He doesn't yeah. scream exactly because I I missed. I just missed the relationship with um, George and Estelle. Oh, and, of course, of course. No, no, Doug on King of Queens and. Uh, Leah Rem- Remini is her Remini. real name. What's the character's name? What's her name on the show? Oh, it's um. Oh, God, what is her name on the show? Doug and um. I can't think. Carrie. Of it. Carrie. Ca- okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, I love. Uh, it's a great. I feel like he's more animated with his hands, though. He's always like kind of making yeah. his point. Yeah. And clapping his hands together. It, he's Jerry Stiller. It's just incredible. What? what uh, how great of it is it becomes this you know star late in his career in his life. I know, and, uh, right? I know. You know, but that was one of my favorite comebacks when he just says, you know, hey, did you tell him you live in my basement? And he goes, Did you tell him you're immense? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but back and, to Andre. And the Dillard, crazy thing right? is, uh-huh. um, a, a guy that I went to high school with, um, who who was actually the you know the show the, the show called Suits on it was on the USA network. I don't, Aaron Korsh is the I remember that, but I never saw him. Yeah. Aaron actually wrote i think he wrote for king of queens i mm-hmm. think that's the show i know matthew barry was the, the fantasy guy for espn uh was a writer in hollywood it might have mm-hmm. been king of queens but anyway um great show i love comedies the, yeah lo- that absolutely. was that was a, a fantastic one yep, yep so that was jason avon's point is that here is is a guy who has natural hands and footwork but comes from the pac-12 and you know, it comes from a system that Mike Leach runs where it's all RPO. It's all quick timing. I mean, you don't have to hold your blocks very long and you're not always facing the best of the best from the edge rushers there either. And so, you know, you compare his size and, and his, and his, he's got to get tougher, you know, in fact, the, the exact quote Jason had was something like timidity is not a great characteristic mm. for an offensive mm. lineman. So, mm. so this is why you and I, when we talk about this left tackle battle, we say that Jordan Mailata 
should be the leader in the horse. And it, oh, he's is the lead slide horse. Yeah. favorite, but he's got to win favorite. it now. He, I he's agree. got to show, you know, this is the thing. We're going to have, we're having an off season. It's not, you know, there's no teamwork. There's no 11, 11 or seven on seven, but he's got to show that he's, he's, he's still doing what Stalin wants. And then when they get to training camp, he's just got to bring it. And then plus we're going to have a preseason. So there, right. that's the thing about this as we get into our show tonight or today, Thursday, Thursday morning. Um, we just, we have to let it play out. We, we, a, a lot of situations with the Eagles. The Eagles have so many subplots, man. <laughs> Way more than I expected to have. Oh, I mean, why, why should anything change from the offseason? I mean, right. Oh, I know. One, There's one drama. Yeah. At least yeah. these subplots are actually X's and O's related. But, right, exactly. <laughs> Fair point. Good point. Um, the second thing was on Avante Maddox. And um, this is the first time I've heard it described that way. Although Avante did talk about it recently in his own Zoom. But... You know, we always talk about Avante's size being a, uh, you know, prohibitive to play the outside. But Jason doesn't think it's his size as much as it's it's a bad habit that a lot of cornerbacks have to go through that really particularly gets at Avante Maddox. And that's eye discipline. He feels like the biggest issue with Avante Maddox is that um, – He's always got he's got his eyes a little bit too much in the backfield and too much on the the move, the first move the receiver is going to be going to make. And he says when a receiver puts a good little shake or a head nod in, that guy loses Avante very easily. Uh, and then part of that is when you're battling your confidence, you're, you're know, which Avante has done, um, that only compounds it, the problem even more. So there are some shorter corners in this league who have survived and played well. And I think that what Jason is trying to say, if, if Avante could – clean up the eye discipline and do a couple of the other things better that he could probably compete better on the outside. But until he does that, he's probably better su suited for the slot. And I, you know, I do wonder, okay. I do wonder though, him playing have to be playing outside last year. If that hurt him, mm -hmm. um, was he thinking too much? I mean, you, you, he can only answer that, but strong people with the Eagles believe that uh, you know, people who really know, know that he has to play on the inside to, to, to succeed. He must be their slot corner. He was drafted to be the slot corner. I agree. And, and it's, it's, it's a shame. And I understand it. Look, he had to play on the outside because they had no one else last season. Mm -hmm. I, you got to put people in position to be great. He could be a true, he could be a top three slot corner. You know, we've talked about how smart he is since 18. That's mm -hmm. great, but it's all about comfortability. And you're talking about, and Jason was talking about the eye discipline. Mm-hmm. Look, that, that's an issue. And with Ronald Darby, we talked about that two years ago. His eye discipline is terrible. Right. And, and by I, the it, way, you know, it, it, moving to the slot can help you, but you still need good eye discipline. Right. I mean, you, RPOs can kill you. Anything can, you know, a little uh, in-out move or, or um, two-way moves where the receiver has the, the ability to kind of call his own shot there. I mean, th that's stuff that you have to be able to be locked into as well. No, no, no question. And wherever you line up, you, you, you can't be, picking in the backfield all the time. You got to play with better discipline. And look, we got a new coaching staff, mm -hmm. new new B, new DBs coach, new new scheme, new coordinator. It's all going to be different now. He's got to relearn it because it's just it's uh, uh, the way it was explained to me is that this is a complete one eighty in defense. Yes, it's so uh -huh. different from the wide nine and the philosophies and pre snap, post snap, and just the the, the belief on technique teaching. It's just all different. Looking forward to that, all the differences, and, and to see if it really makes a difference in the overall product of the defense. So the last thing I'll, I'll tell you is that while he was Jason was describing Avante Maddox and Andre Dillard and answering the question, he said that as a coach last year, the two people who asked him the most questions were Darius Slay and Avante Maddox. He was trying to make a point about how um, eager these guys are to keep improving. And that's, you know, for Darius right. Slay, a three-time Pro Bowler, to do that, that's big. But he threw this in at the end, which I thought was uh -oh. really interesting. Uh oh. He said, these guys asked me the most amount of questions, even more than the wide receivers did. And I was like, oh, uh, that's, wow. well, I didn't hear the show yet, but now, what, I knew you were setting it up like that. So what have oh. we talked about with this young group of wide receivers? You know, the immaturity or, you know, not taking everything. That's as why they need a veteran. Yes, that's yes. Need a veteran. the fact that they are, I mean, listen, Aaron Moorhead played in the NFL. Jason Avon played in the NFL longer. And I'm not trying to say they should go over Moorhead's head to Jason Avon. I'm not saying that at all. Moorhead is the position coach. But you got a guy who played in Philadelphia, who dealt with that fishbowl environment, 
who played well here, who actually came to the team, what, the year after T.O. got booted off? So he had to kind of <laughs> – by the way, that. there's I a really you. great story about J- from Jason Avon on T.O. that you got to have to listen you, to to hear. I love how you put those clips up. Um, J- Jeff, for the last month or so, has been putting up these clips. What are they, a minute and a half, minute, two minutes? Depends on how good and how long the story is. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And – they're so with both Q and A. It's just it's so funny. And that's right. Avant was eighty one. Yeah, he was eighty one. So I mean, the, to to have two resources here, two wide receivers coaches. One played with Peyton Manning, right? The other played in Philadelphia. They were, but you know, both can give you a lot of resources and answer your questions and help you when you are struggling. And how many guys last year struggled? Whether it was Fulgham after his four weeks, or Hightower getting open and dropping passes, or Watkins not being able to get on the field. For the first 10 weeks or so, I mean, I just thought that was very interesting that he said that the corners were asking him more questions. And that's, I mean, it, so. I'll tell you, it, it's funny. Jason's our, our, our uh, former Eagles player insider now. He's yeah. just got <laughs> so much incredible information. And, 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 you know, it's funny because I remember when we met with them and mm-hmm. they, we, whatever we, we had a call, I don't know, whatever it was, a Zoom or whatever it was. The only thing I said is, please tell stories. Yes. Please, yes, and the fans are stories. over the moon with them. Over yeah. the moon with them. I love it. Stories are great. All right, so I just wanted to – can I go through that with you? I thought that was really interesting, and especially in light of how we've talked about wide receivers and the offensive line battles and things like that, to, to hear those guys say it. Um, we're going to get into our quarterback and tight end positional overview as we uh, continue our preview series here. First, I want to remind everybody, don't be a loser. Stop paying full retail price. For the things you want, just get on Deal Dash. You go to DealDash.com or you just download the app like Adam and I have done. And when you register, you enter the prime promo code ITB for a special offer for some bonus free bids. That's right. If you want bonus free bids to start your, your bidding, you just hit the promo code ITB when you register on DealDash.com or the Deal Dash app. All right, let's, let's talk quarterback here. Um, this is a new era. For the Eagles, right. um, there is no Carson Wentz, and uh, that era was a lot shorter than we all thought it was going to be. Okay, still, I'm still kind of like, as you set that up, I'm still. Is it registered? Yeah, it is registered. But again, tw- less than two years ago, from where we are right now, they extended his contract. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just the whole thing's absurd. That that'll go in our memoirs. Yes. Anyway, we, we need to beat ESPN to do it. We need to do an ITB 30 for 30, but we can't well, call look, it that because that's too we, much of a ripoff. But we, we probably can, already did, yeah. <laughs> no, but we, right. We can do – look, we can do theme shows. I mean, we did uh, the ESPN. We did um, we did it on NFL Insiders because it was a spring show. Uh-huh. Might have, it might have been in June. We did a Chip Kelly show half an hour because we were so, like – he was so polarizing. Right. You right. know, can, this can we do thing a, was crazy. Sure. Can we do a show where we would get like really guests who have overcome tremendous adversity in their life and they start crying uh, like Roy Firestone used to do on ESPN? You remember that? Like the, the Roy Firestone used to make his guests cry, you know, because they always had some tremendous stories of overcoming adversity to the point where when they made Jerry Maguire, right, if you remember – Cuba Gooding as Rod Tidale. He goes on that show in the movie, and he's like, "You're not going to make me cry, Roy. You're not going to do it." And he starts tearing up. And oh, what was that? Called? What was this? Show? Uh, um, it was like some kind of something chats with with sports Roy, look, sports look, or with Roy Firestone. I I don't remember. And then Chris Myers took it over after he left. He kind yeah. of like retired, moved to Florida or something. Yeah, yeah. But Roy was, you know, Chris did a good job, but Roy was like the tear jerk. I just always figured out he was a way great. To- he he um. Other than yeah, it's, we don't need to go too big. He had one fan, I, in one infamous one where he really screwed up. With oh, uh, I'm a, not aware of that. Okay. Yeah, a, a very polarizing um, former athlete, and we won't need to get into that. But uh, oh man, now you're leaving me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm we'll, probably we'll, gonna have to Google it now. <laughs> you don't have to. It's it's not worth it. But the fact okay. of the matter is, um, up close. That was the name of his show. Up close. Up yeah, close yeah. Thank Roy you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports, sports look. Damn, what the hell? What was that? Oh, he might have done a show called that too. I just remember yeah, up close. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the infamous. There was the um, then when um, Jim Rome took it over, uh, the um, uh, the quarterback for the Rams, who I've talked to over Twitter, Jim before. Everett, who he called yeah. Chris Everett. Yes, right, Chris Everett. He's really, by the way, it, he's really good on Twitter. Uh, Jim Everett. Oh, you is follow he? Him? Yeah. Okay, no, I didn't follow him. I, anyway. I mean that that kind of made Jim Rome's career getting punched. I know. I mean, not that Jim he needed Everett. it, but he's pretty good on radio. But uh, he is, yeah. Anyway, we digress. Back to the Eagles. 
Yeah. So like I said, it's a, it's a, a new era. Jalen hurts is our uh, number one quarterback for the moment. You always have to say that with the Eagles for the moment, which I think, you know, anything can happen, but high percentage that he'll be the starter for the entire season. I'm like, is there a chance? Look, we we've reported noted others have that the Eagles have continued to monitor the Watson situation as, as much as far as I know on this, I've been checking on it. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. sounds like they're still doing that. I, I, there, there, there are plenty of teams that are not sure if he's going to play football this season, Watson. They're, they're mm-hmm. not convinced that he will be. Um, the NFL's not said a word on the investigation. I'm a little bit surprised that we've heard nothing on this thing. I'm a, I agree with you on that. Really, but weird. Anyway, like, how long does this go on? You know, like, let's say well, by training was, camp, yeah. by training camp, we have to have an answer. I'm sure we'll have an answer on what, what, where they're at with this thing. Right. After. I would think so. I mean, there has to be kind of an all hands on deck approach, I think, by the NFL to get gather as much information and do as much investigation as it can to get this done quickly. I mean, what if he was playing? What if he decided he wanted to play for Houston at the last second? Well, that's and, wh- why. You know. Because they can't, they have to, they have to get a feel for the situation. Right. Because if, if they think like a lot of these allegations are made up, then that's one thing. If mm-hmm. they think there's, if there's any credibility to it, which you would think, how could 22 women be lying? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, you got to take this stuff seriously. Mm-hmm. And they have to come up with, okay, where are we at with this thing? Because as you said, and you're right, you don't want someone who you feel like might be, have, have issues mm-hmm. or this stuff, some of the stuff's true on the field. So that I agree. I wonder if the Eagles in their own investigation, right. And, and doing their work, I, I just wonder if they would make a deal for Deshaun Watson, if there was one to be made, knowing that he still might miss X number of games, even if, Charges are dropped, but the, you know, like with the Ezekiel Elliott or the well, no charges. Oh, he hasn't been charged. He hasn't charged anything. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't say charges are dropped. If the lawsuits are are, uh, you know, if everything just goes away, right? Oh, you mean they they were all dropped? No, that's what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. if everything oh, goes away, be, it doesn't I mean, mean he's cleared though, because you know, as we've seen with the NFL, they've punished athletes before without yeah. having a smoking gun or a police record or anything like that. So, yeah. if the Eagles felt strongly that it was going to miss, he was going to be suspended. For anywhere from four to six games, is it still worth trading for him? Six and would be the him? baseline, yeah, for for the stuff. But. Right, he might appeal. I mean, you never know. But that's why I'm I'm just you know going through there. But I just wonder if call. they would I say, "Hey, we'll take that." You know, knowing we've got four or five years. Again, if their information is that they feel like he's not as uh, what he's being per, uh, alleged to be. Let me ask you this question because mm-hmm. I, a very high ranking personal source with another team, they, this team does not need a quarterback. Okay, we were talking about Watson recently, and and. I, uh, last through last three weeks he's the i've used this line because this this is how you sum it up would you be proud to have deshaun watson be the face of your franchise and when he put it, yeah, yeah and he I mean, put it to me that way i was like if any of this stuff is even remotely true you can because the kids want to wear jerseys and number four jerseys and the crazy stuff about deshaun watson if, if, if you know anything about his career incredible ch- charitable work mm-hmm. you never heard anything bad about this guy Correct. Now you don't know what to believe with this with this guy. Yeah, I well, mean, I, I, it's hard for me to opine because I don't know. I haven't done the investigation. I read the the Sports Illustrated story. I thought it was it was harrowing, you know. But I didn't get his side of the story. I don't, you know. I, I I'd just be commenting off what everybody else sees, and that's not really fair because that's yeah. not the full story. So, but I think that that is the question that anybody who wants to trade for him has to ask, right? I mean, they have to say with the information in front of him. Do I now think that he is not a guy I want as the face of my franchise, or am I okay thinking he he can still be? Or does he have something to say? Is he remorseful? Is he is he does he say I did do things in the past that I shouldn't have done? Because obviously, you know, the league has has been forgiving. Look at Michael Vick, right? I mean, he did terrible things and got a second chance because he went he served time and he was remorseful and he dedicated himself to being a better person at working with the Humane Society. So does this would be, Watson have to do that? I don't know. Well, well, again, if well, the way you're setting that up, if he's admitting, like, what is he admitting? That's what I'm saying. We're we're right. lacking in in that context that's needed to make Clarity, that, right, answer that question. Right, yeah, right. It, it's it's really I I could tell you, um, working on Watson's situation for 17 when he was drafted. Mm-hmm. Everything was glowing and everything pristine with his off the field. Like you never would have believed anything. Right. But 
when all this stuff happens, you just, you scratch your head. You go, I mean, could he be like this a after everything we've knew? We've now, but this, this goes to show you. And again, I'm not saying he's guilty of anything. We don't know mm -hmm. what the truth is, mm -hmm. but it just goes to show you. We just don't know people. We just don't know, like with the massage therapist, so many different, this is so bizarre. Having so many different massage therapists is just unheard of. Yeah, I would agree. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't even have one. <laughs> I don't like massage. I just, to be honest with you. um, I, it's definitely very unique. I've never, I, I've looked into that, and players typically have one or two. They usually like to settle with one person they trust, right? But it's just so bizarre. And um, anyway, we don't want to make this whole show about this situation. But correct, you're right. With the quarterback situations, it's brand new. Hertz is the presumed starter. Flack will be the backup. Yep. Does it? We've talked about this before, but it, it's definitely worth discussing again because it sets this whole thing up. Is it really? Yes, Sirianni wants competition, and I like that about him. But the fact of the matter is, Hertz is going to be the starter. We know that. Correct. Is there really a competition? Does anybody think it's a competition? I hope not. I mean, I hope, you know, people don't well, think that Joe Flacco is really competing and has a chance to be the starter for, for week one. I mean, the only way that happens is if Jalen's hurt. Jalen or Hertz has it, is hurt. Right, right, right. <laughs> Unless he's... Unless he has this really bad training camp. And oh remember, I mean, he'd have to like fall on his face. I would yes. <laughs> but just remember, uh huh. Just remember, this is a new coaching staff. They've, been, they've never worked with it before. True. They've never worked with Flacco before. So they, Hurts just has to look, and, 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 but we might as well get this. Everything I've heard so far has been really good. Take charge, mm -hmm. commands respect. You're liking, we're, Jeff and I are liking what we're hearing so far. But again, they're not doing seven on seven, 11 on 11s. Mm -hmm. So it's, you're not, you, when we talk about competing, you're just not, you're not having, you're not having work, having the usual work you would have in the off season because the, the, the agreement between the Eagles players and the coaches that they will not have any teamwork. So it won't heat up the, just the wanting to see what you want to see from Hertz in terms of 11, 11, 7, 7 accuracy and getting this offensive timing, which is it's a big timing offense. Right. You're not going to see that until August. No, and this, what you're saying is what I've heard too, as far as leadership, poise, presence. In fact, one person who's who's seen him said he's seen a laser focus in him, which is what you want. You know, Good. this guy has an opportunity right in front of him that he can seize. He's got no real competition within his own confines, um, unless he does, like you said, unless he's just awful, right? So he's worked with his receivers and some of the running backs in the offseason. He's done everything right, and that's a really good first step. That's that's important. And the fact that they were able to negotiate an agreement to get everybody in camp or at least almost everybody and have him to be able to work with coaches and work more with teammates is a great thing. Let me ask you this, because I've heard this about him from a couple of people, and mm -hmm. I wonder if you've heard the same. As far as um, how he is in the locker room, right? He uh, Someone described him to me as almost very Carson Wentz like in the fact that he's I think the word he used was like introverted in that, in a, you have to, everything is in the quarterback uh, context of quarterbacks. Some quarterbacks are like, rah, rah, yeah. You know, you know, they, sure, they sure. have to be as the quarterback. Carson was not like that. And I have heard that Jalen is similarly not like that. Like he's not gathering the troops and giving the big impassion. He's, he's generally a quiet person. Teammates respect him yes. he along well, yeah. but he yeah. is not rah, rah out, no. you know, like that kind of guy. He's a pretty serious guy or two things about serious, him. They're both yes. positive. Yes. Very serious, diligent, has really good command. Like you, you, you feel his presence. As you said, he's not loud, but you know, he carries himself a certain way. Right. And he's he leads like that. You don't have to scream and yell to be a leader, right? Philip Rivers is a guy who screams and yells sure. and he's hemming and hawing sure. and you know that that's fine. That's one. Carson was not like that. Part. Yeah, and Carson was not like that. No, right? he. I I that, I think it's you set up really well. I, I've talked mm -hmm. to Eagles about both quarterbacks since obviously Wentz and, and now Hurts and yeah, everything I've heard that I is that they're uh, quiet leaders. I don't know if you'd say a quiet leader like Teddy Bridgewater, mm -hmm. but both have Wentz had presence in his own way. This guy hurts has it in his own way, and it's so far so good. And I, I'm, I cannot wait to see him in training camp. Uh, I want to see how far he's come. This is a completely different. I don't know if it's. I know in 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 structure to West Coast offense. I don't know if the terminology is the same, but I'm going to call it a West Coast offense because this is what we've been told since February, and everything I've heard, you and I've heard, it's the same. So, 
Um, we're expecting it to be supremely timing based offense where you're going to have some anticipation. Uh, that that's something that hurts to not do a lot of uh, anywhere he was, whether it's Oklahoma or Alabama, this is going to be a little bit new for him, but you know what? Everything I heard, he's a hard worker and he's up to it. He's a coach's son. He's very coachable. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how good he can be in this offense. That to me is the, the thing that, I, that um, we saw from him when he was New Orleans game, and then particularly the Arizona game where he had to bring the team back. That, that really excited me just because I like quarterback play. You know, you Definitely. like, we love evaluating this stuff and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That was poise. That was presence. That was leadership. That was, that was very, very impressive to hold it together after falling behind 16, nothing. We, we made, we've made that point a thousand times. And just to clarify, just in case anybody's wondering, when I when I made that statement about what I had heard about Jalen uh, Hurts' personality, you know, that was there was no value judgment for me on that. There was no that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just yeah. simply relaying how it was told to me, and the way it was told to me was not as this is a good thing or a bad thing. It was just sure. this is a, this is what he is like. So th- there's some sensitivities out there. If you haven't noticed, Adam, where you might say something like factual or very down the middle about. Jalen Hurts, and then all of a sudden, you either love him or hate him too much. Like it's it's unbelievable how words these yeah. days are are just like taken yeah. from one way to another. So I just want to make it clear: I am not killing him or praising him. I'm just stating a simple fact. Yeah, it is one thing I've noticed in social media and some of the the, the our, our um whether it's our well, actually particularly the um the YouTube comments. Mm-hmm. Man, there there is no in the middle with him. They either love him can't wait to see him play or they're haters it's uh it's really the quarterback position and obviously right it's the most polarizing professional sports because it's the most the highest paid in football and it's just the one everybody looks for leadership and the guy's got to be special and all that it is man there's no variance man on this kid they're either love him or they're they're like "Ah, i don't it's it's, it, it surprises me even still in 2021 it shouldn't surprise me but i mean in every sport we've seen athletes who you just don't have a big enough sample size to judge right or you may have seen an athlete like a bobby hoying right who had a very small sample size played well <laughs> and it was like Hoying. oh my god this guy's gonna be the next greatest thing that you know, is Meryl, true Meryl Meryl reese loved here. bobby hoying i remember you Meryl here reese. then how did you remember that but i but look, I mean, when you cover a team for 15 yeah. years you you it hear was enough, right unbelievable i remember we talked to joe banner about this and uh, joe j- laughed Thank God that his agent t- didn't take the extension. Right. <laughs> it was unbelievable. He had a short period of time where he looked like he was, you're exactly right, like, kind of like Kevin Cobb. Yeah. Yeah. Went yeah. down the tubes. Yeah. So it's weird. It's like, cause I feel like I'm in a neutral, I'm not on a battleground here. I'm in a, I'm a, I want to wait and see. I, I, I'm very curious. I want to see, but for some people, if you, if you don't plant your flag right now and say, this guy's going to be the greatest thing in the next franchise quarterback for 10 years, you hate him. And I'm like, no, no, I just want to see. Just like anybody else. Saw, like Miles well, he started Sanders. four games. Come on. Yeah, come on. four games, right? Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry if being neutral offends people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even saying Are you I Switzerland? Think he's bad. Are you Switzerland? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I am Switzerland. I just I'm I'm like most people. I just I want to see. It'll be wait and see. But I'm I that Arizona <laughs> game, I still because what happened the reason why I've talked about the game a lot is he looked he he looked nervous. He took the he took the safety. Mm-hmm. I'm like oh this is gonna be a bad game and i remember you and i we were texting each other like all right let's get ready to do our show early because this one's gonna be ugly right and he brought jeff and i've had we've kind of jinxed ourselves when uh sports writers or, or reporters are not supposed to do that mm-hmm. like never jinx overtime never say oh this ge- this game d- don't talk about the game potentially going overtime because you're going to jinx it that damn miracle in the meadowlands too i was there for fox sports and i stupidly <laughs> opened my mouth and said I don't know. We might, this might go a little bit longer. And you know, as soon as I said that, Bob Ford, every reporter said, What are you doing, you idiot? Why are you jinxing? I'm oh, sorry. And it did. It went over time. Anyway. Uh, it's amazing how that happens. Yeah. Um, h- how much do you expect for, for this coaching staff and Jalen Hurts in year one? Like, how much patience will there be? Because I've already said that I think it's tough to grade a guy on one year. You never know what's going to happen around him like I I would like to think the coaches will be very patient with Jalen Hurts but especially since the first six games are the schedule is not easy when you've got Tampa and Kansas City uh, a good Atlanta offense in there I mean you know I would say it's a great question because quite frankly it's like one of the we'll probably have to do a show that's top training camp questions it is 
but it's more of a in season question. Maybe it'll kick off. Maybe we'll, before we start the season, we'll do a show top 10 Eagles questions for the season. That is top three, maybe for the season for the mm-hmm. Eagles. Mm-hmm. How much slack will he have? You know, as they say, string rope, whatever you want to call it. Every, every young quarterback goes through this. Mm-hmm. I remember when Flacco was with Baltimore, they made the choice. If you remember, it was um, the Ohio state quarterback got ill. Um, Troy Smith. He, Troy he Smith, got sick. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they were good. They were leaning towards go. They, they weren't sure if Flacco was ready and Troy Smith got sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know what happened. He was not, a, he was not able to play for a little I bit or be available. And they said, screw it. We're just going to go with Joe. Mm-hmm. And then you saw what happened with um, Justin Herbert. And unfortunately Tyrod Taylor with that freak uh, accident from the, the medical staff. Uh, right. Terrible. And, and they, they were not going to play. They did not want to play Herbert early. Right. It is just funny though, with this stuff teams tell you, no, we're not playing. We're not playing them. And they play. Yeah. Well, they had to there because because uh, th- what happened with Tyler Taylor. But um, with this kid, I get he was a second round pick, but remember, folks, they took him earlier than they, their grade uh, dictated because they didn't want anyone to get him in the third. I just think they see it out. I think unless look, they're not expected to make the playoffs. Let's call it like it is. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll be better than people think. Like you and I, maybe better than you and I think. I mean, I, I've said six or seven wins. That that's pretty much what they are, right? Uh, on paper, but. It's a bad division, so we'll see. I, I think they'll give them – I think it'll be pretty – to answer your question, sum it up so we can move on. I think they'll be pretty patient with them. They should. You know, I hope they don't do what the Miami staff did with Tua. That oh. was not normal. And, that was um, – I've never seen anything like that. No. And, and unfortunately, they did well last year, so they probably think that that was a, a winning formula but to have a closer in Ryan Fitzpatrick. But I can't think – that's good for, excuse me, long-term success right so there. So weird. It, it, it's, it's very it, odd. A, a quarterback closer. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. I mean, and, and, <laughs> is that and, analytics? And here's the crazy thing. So I don't know if you know this, um, or remember that. So Ryan Fitzpatrick went on the COVID list, right? For week 17. Yeah. Well, you know what would have happened. Fitzpatrick would have been, that would have been a third game he would have replaced to it. Two was terrible in that game. They got absolutely smoked. Was he? Awful. Well, there's oh, going to be peaks like... and valleys. There's going to be peaks and valleys yeah. this coming year, and you just hope that um, the coaching staff has the right patience. And I really hope that this team finally avoids the me. I mean, of course, they're going to have injuries here and there, but just this rash yeah. of injuries. Let let Jalen Hurts at least have a uh, a good enough t- offense around him, not just like third stringers at every spot, so that it becomes well, impossible. Uh, you never know about. Julio Jones, I'm not rolling anything out in that. You and I keep hearing the same stuff. We'll see. We'll we'll, we'll get to that in a sec. But uh, I, I'm I'm excited to see Devontae Smith, uh, the mm-hmm. first rounder, who they just rave about. He's everything so far they expected. I understand it's OTAs, but the seriousness of his job. If you're a Nick Saban player, it's all about football. It's all about taking your job seriously. You come up with an attitude, the right attitude. You want to dominate. This kid is a silent leader. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what they need for that locker room. And he's going to set the example. This is exactly what they needed for this locker room at wide receiver. Absolutely. So, again, I hope Jalen has a really good offense around him to be able to give him an accurate uh, – give the coaching staff uh, a good barometer of, of uh, this Agreed. kid's abilities. Agreed. All right, I want to talk also about the other quarterbacks. But quickly, Adam, DraftKings Sportsbook, it's not only my favorite sportsbook and your favorite sportsbook, but America's top – rated sports book. I love using DraftKings Sportsbook. It's easy to navigate. It's got plenty of instructions for new bettors and nearly limitless ways to get in on all of the action. My friends and family have been loving DraftKings Sportsbook, and I know you will too. Listen to this great offer. DraftKings Sportsbook is putting you courtside with a chance to turn $1 into $100 in site credits. That's right. You pick any basketball team that's still in contention, like the 76ers, baby, bet $1, and if that team wins you $100 in site credits, all right? Don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook also offers great odds and promotions on baseball, hockey, and so much more all week long. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code ITB when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits Bet on the basketball team of your choice to win its next game. And if that team wins, you claim $100 in free credits. 
That's promo code ITB for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Wager paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, let's uh, let's go on to um, talk about the other quarterbacks. Uh, by the way, with Flacco, Adam, I know I, <laughs> people hate Joe Flacco already because he hasn't been like a – you know, an upper echelon quarterback in the league for four or five years, but he had a neck surgery. He's coming off a neck surgery. He's with the Jets, who are an awful team, awful head coach. Everything's awful around him. He he did not have a normal OTAs. Didn't have a normal. Didn't have anything. He he. It was interesting though. I'm told he was he was actually throwing, maybe three four weeks after he had his neck surgery, but he was not allowed to. He, we know quarterbacks can't get hit, but. Literally, because it had to heal, mm-hmm. he could. He was only allowed to do certain things, and he wasn't really he. He wasn't cleared till mid September. Mm-hmm. But you're right; they just had no. It, it was an embarrassment. The coaching also was not very good there. No, but uh, he looked really good against the Patriots. One game he didn't look good at all; he looked poor. Right, but just right. He did. He had no offs. He, he literally didn't start practice until September. First. Right. So all I would care about is can he still throw the ball? Because he's always had one of the best arms oh, in the league. Enormous. Can he yeah. still throw the ball with torque? I yes. saw torque. Yes. Everything else you see doesn't look good. That's fine. You're right. He had that one. I think it was more like a good half against the Patriots, but it was pretty decent. Um, but nonetheless, that's all I care about. Because how can you, you know, for the same reasons I say you can't accurately evaluate Jalen Hurts in four games when he had so much going against him that's around him. Same thing with Joe Flacco. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say because he played poorly for a terrible team last year when he had no training camp and was coming off a of surgery that this guy is completely a shot fighter. No, I mean I, I think he's a good backup I, to have. And it's funny, I, I love that people say, Oh, they should have signed Jacoby Brissett. Okay, would it cost you more? Number one. Mm-hmm. Uh number two, what has Jacoby Brissett ever done? Well, that's a great, I mean, sure. sure. I mean, he's got a couple of 10 and 11 win seasons. That's about it. Yeah. He, got, he, they saw so little of them. They decided that he, the Colts decided they would not be the future quarterback. That is true. So, you know, so. I mean, I, mean, I would have been fine with him as a backup because you're not, at, yeah. when you're, when you're looking for a backup, you're just looking for a veteran who can play the sport. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 I mean, great high character guy. You know, Bill Parcells has been uh Brissette's advisor. He doesn't have an agent. Right. Um, but again, it's about a guy who's done it before. Mm-hmm. Black was a former Super Bowl MVP. I understand it was a long time ago. He's in the twilight of his career. But I don't I don't know. People are like, oh my God, how could you pay him three million dollars? You know what his cap number is? When it, you want to laugh? Actually, we didn't talk about this. Take a guess what his cap number is. Brissett's cap number or no 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 Black. Flacco's. Oh, this year? Yeah. Ah, is it even two million? Well, no, what's interesting is it's um his cap number is they gave they they made dumb years right and spread out correct, the money correct so so what it is his cap number is only one five they're paying him um, just under four million mm-hmm. but his cap number is only one point five six million yeah I mean, how do you they, turn that to, I mean he was willing to he didn't care he just he you know he he's got uh, four voidable years I love it right so that means he'll he'll be you know he'll be he'll be on the Eagles books for the next two years even though he probably or after this year even though he probably won't be on the Eagles yeah after this year but that's a story for a lot of guys yep, yep. um Jamie Newman here's the thing the Eagles normally have more than three quarterbacks right but right now Jamie Newman is their third he's the the rookie free agent from uh, Wake have, Forest uh, wait did they have four last year last year well, they, they didn't had have an offseason so Carson wait they did I think they had Carson. Mm-hmm. They had um, Jalen, they had Sudfeld, and at this time last year, they had Lauletta, did they not? They might have had Kyle Lauletta. I'd have yeah, to look Yeah, I think they had Kyle Lauletta okay. at this time last year. So they, normally, uh, normally – You are correct. Four. You're correct. Yep. That's why I do this job, Adam. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so, yeah, this year only three, and um, do you, do you, I, don't, I can't imagine they're going to sign anybody else at that position. So the question really is – does Jamie Newman have a realistic shot at making the 53 or do you hope that you can get him on your practice squad? Well, you would, I'm assuming the third preseason game will get, will be treated like the, le, the fourth preseason game where the, the starters don't play. Mm-hmm. So let's say Jamie Newman has this unbelievable preseason, not, not only in that game, but every time he comes in in the first and second game, he looks great. Right. That, that, that's all on tape. And that's the thing is, you know, teams try to hide 
players, developmental players, but you're not going to hide an undrafted free agent. You're just going to let him play. Mm-hmm. Now, also, this may or may not have played in Noah Togi I last year. Right. It, if reporters are at practice, because I'm I'm the first to tell you, I don't keep my mouth shut when I go to training camps. So I'm you know I'm doing interviews. I'm, I'm I'm on the radio, and you you know, you you know you same thing too when you go to camps. Mm-hmm. People want to know what do you see, and I I'm going to say it if the guy looks great. I mean, and people read, they follow us on Twitter. Um, it's going to get out. Reporters yep. know if they're there at practice. They know the quarterback position is not hard to tell if the guy's looking great. He's got mm-hmm. tools, by the way. He's got good size. He's got a good arm. Uh, mechanics need to be redeveloped, but he's got, right. he's got, he's a kind of guy you'd like to put on a practice squad. Sure. If he, sure. You know, and it, they missed him Clayton Thorson. It was the fifth round or 19. That was supposed to be their developmental guy. Maybe he could be a backup. They were hoping development was their number two, by the way. It obviously never worked out. They cut him. Right. So. Right. It did not work out, but it was, again, the philosophy was good. Maybe the evaluation was not, but we are always proponents of taking quarterbacks later in the draft and hope that they morph into your, your future backup. Uh, Newman has good size, good good athleticism, good arm. He so he's got the three kind of check marks you're looking for for a developmental quarterback. So I agree, he's going to obviously have a lot of uh, reps as camp goes on. If you only have three quarterbacks there um, with the with the with the third team, and the, I think the big question is, would they be able to then sneak him on to the practice squad if they don't want to keep him on the 53? That then that's a discussion for several that's... weeks down the road. But yes. there is one – This, th- I will say this. Let's say he's just okay and not so good. Um, I remember Chip Kelly when he had took over the personnel, uh, and I think it was that year, right? He, was, he had Tim Tebow and Matt Barkley competing for the number three quarterback spot. I guess it was Vic and Foles, and then those two were competing for the, the number three. Or was it Bradford at that point? No, it might have been Vic Foles. And then don't the, make me look it up. Right. Please I'm don't. sorry. But the point I'm trying to make is this. This is one of my better, more accurate analysis at Keep the going. time. Go. We, as a public, they were consumed with, is it going to be Tebow or Barkley? Tebow or Barkley? And I remember saying, I did a TV interview saying, no one's considering the fact that Chip could just very well not keep either of these guys as a third quarterback and then find someone else, which is what he wound up actually doing. If you remember, he cut both of them, and then he signed as a – he claimed off waivers – the kid from Miami, Stephanie, uh, Stefan. Oh, I can't remember his last name. Now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple things. Okay. Stefan something, right? I'll, I'll give it to you in a second. Remember G.J. Kinney? I do remember G.J. Kinney, yes. Yeah, he was with he was them a, then. Like a I don't know if they moved him to run. I'm sorry? <laughs> he had like a cult following here, like a fan. Right. I, I don't know if they moved him to running back or – because mm-hmm. in camp, they had Bradford Sanchez, Mark Sanchez. Yeah. Your guy, Matt Barkley, Tebow, who was awful, by the way. He was, it was funny. There was this report, which turned out to be totally incorrect, mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, oh, the only way he wouldn't make it, I can't remember what the phrase was. It was just so, it was just, he, in fact, Chip buried that report. <laughs> he said that, I think he might have said he needs to go to the CFL to, to get, to, uh, to get, he needs, he needs work. Uh huh. Um, but if you look at the quarterbacks w- with Chip then, uh-huh. They were they were searching for a backup man because Bradford was the you know if they got rid of Falls right they were looking for one that was the yes. story yes so I can't remember the kid's name but he wound up cutting both of those guys and and claiming I know you're else talking about waivers. damn and athletic quarterback too um, that you would think would fit Chip Kelly's read option what, what year was this fifteen I I don't know I'm I old. know it's gonna happen because the, our, <laughs> our, our our people are gonna watch they're gonna watch this oh don't you remember they're gonna put it in our um in our uh in on our YouTube but uh, yeah I'm I'm drawing a complete blank oh. yeah but either way I think that that's something to watch for too we we can't get sure. too consumed basically and by and it's kind of similarly Clayton Thorson didn't make the Eagles right but he got claimed off waivers by the Cowboys so the Cowboys clearly had somebody in camp that everybody thought would probably be their third number three. That guy got cut and in came Clayton Thorson that year. So it could happen. Yeah. I'm, I'm yes, it, it could. Thorson had the ability, you know, he had an ACL injury in college that something happened. They lost patience with him very early. It's, it's one was, of those kind of, uh, man, that, these drafts, I mean, was that the same draft where that was 19, uh, right? 19. Yeah. So was that where they took Sharif Miller in the fourth round? Yes, jeez. What, what he he had a couple qual. He had one year too, right? And then he was bounced. And then they yeah, brought him back. And then they bounced he, him again. Yeah, Panthers. I think it's with the Cardinals now. For yeah, yeah. Anyway. 
Well, we are, we've been through the, the rough drafts. We know. Uh, all right. So very interesting. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, I, I, I will look forward to kind of getting a better idea of Jamie Newman as training camp, um, if, uh, you know, goes and, and what we hear on how he's performing. Uh, just something to keep in mind about whether or not he or a different quarterback would make this team uh, as a number three. Q. It would take a lot. It answered yeah. your question. It would take a lot, but I'm telling you, getting, t- I know this quarterback position is so important. Not that <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm saying this, but I've mentioned it once before and it does bear repeating. Because Tom Brady, right? I remember Scott Piola telling me, the former personnel director, mm-hmm. why they they were not – they were so bullish on him. They were not going to put they, – they, so they kept him as their fourth quarterback. They were not going to expose him to waivers. Right. So what you do is – and again, that's obviously an extreme example, but it, it, it's similar in that if you think – if you're if Newman kicks ass mm-hmm. and you're concerned about him being claimed, you keep him. He's a quarterback, man. You don't let these guys you, – you develop – you don't – if the kid turns out to be really damn good for you in the preseason training camp, you mm-hmm. don't take that risk. No doubt about it. By the way, was it Stephen Morris? Was that, that you got the, it? Yes, yeah. Stephen Morris. Who, Stephen Morris. All right. Good call by you. Yeah. It, yeah. It, now it, now Miami, he had an arm. Off waivers. Right. I'm sorry. He so he's the one they claimed off waivers after they cut Tebow and Matt Barkley from the Colts, maybe. Um, I thought he was with the Jaguars first. I think they, they claimed that, and he may have went on. He played for like 11 different teams. I know it was a lot. <laughs> the reason why I bring that, because it was either Chris Ballard or one of the GMs I ran into on my training camp tour that year. Uh-huh. Said, it was, said how much they liked him. Like a great kid. He was a perfect like practice squad player or something. Right. And I was like, you know, I always followed Steve. I don't know if I saw him in the senior ball. I, was, I might have seen him in one of the ball ga- the uh, All-Star games. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Stephen Morris, there's another, another guy. Wow. Last mm. from the past, baby. All right, we're going to go on to tight ends. Before, I want to uh, direct everybody to our friends at, at uh, phlsportsnation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all of our professional Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan, that's their motto. So make sure you check out all of their great work. You can find them on Twitter, at phlsportsnation, or just go to the website, phlsportsnation.com. And let's pause real quick for another word from our great sponsors, including our friends, at Sky Motor Cars. All right, if you head into Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. All right, let's move on to tight ends because this is a fascinating um, position right now for the Eagles. They are just like we talked about with quarterback. It's kind of uh, undergoing a, a major change here. Zach Ertz is technically still on the roster as you know at the time of this recording. Um, I, I know that what Howie has said about Zach Ertz and how important he is. And, you know, we know how he doesn't just give guys away. And, um, you've, you've talked to Adam about the contract being a hurdle for other teams, right? Trying to there's acquire him. I'll tell you what, there's interest in this player. It, 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 you're right. right. The, the issue is not the player. It's the, it's 8.5 million. Right. And that's, but I don't, I, I can't see, I, I just personally, this is just not me reporting anything. This is right. my personal feel. I don't see how you can have him back. Uh, you know, it's funny. Now we you, got the gut. You have we'll a new coaching God. staff. They want to accomplish something here, yeah. right? Like you got Dallas Goddard. You need to find out about Dallas Goddard. Like there's, it, to me, it's just not, you don't want this hanging. You, you have this nice honeymoon thing going on right now with the new coaching staff and the younger players. And I think that that gets in the way. Well, it gets in the way from from a personnel standpoint because if you have Zach Ertz on the football team, you got to be twelve personnel again. You got to justify his contract. Exactly. It just it makes no sense to keep him. But I'm going to tell you why it makes sense from Eagle standpoint. So we can there there are like so many reports out there. There's nothing when I tell you there's nothing new going on. Trust me on this. Mm-hmm. There's nothing new. It, it it just reporters are looking for something because it's a slow time of year. What's out there is we put out weeks ago. Okay. The Eagles are not going to cut Zach Ertz. Why are they not going to cut Zach Ertz? Because they want a draft pick. Whether they trade him, okay, and get what they want, what they're willing to accept, mm-hmm. they're not taking a six-round pick for him. They think he's obviously worth more than that, okay? Or they keep him, because if they keep him, they, they let him walk. Look at a compensatory pick. They're not worried about the cap space. They got their cap rebate on, Ju- on June 2nd. Um, they, they're going to be okay. They, they, they can handle his contract. Now, now, the only issue is, though, if by chance he's on the roster, 
they're not gonna have a ton of cap space. I mean, we'll 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 get their we'll we'll um we'll have an update. The NFLPA site, uh, I haven't checked with Eagles on it yet because I'm dealing with a hundred things now. Mm-hmm. But I know the NFLPA site on on Thursday morning had uh, had it at over eight million, but that's only four million more than they had earlier this week. So uh, it's going to be. I know that I know that it's going to be way more than that. But then you got to sign your rookies. And I don't know what the rookie pool number is. Usually it's between five and eight million. Mm-hmm. So look, the, the, just to move this forward here, the, it's fluid. The, the, it, he, he could be traded anytime. If, they, if the Eagles get what they want, which is clearly more than a fifth or sixth round pick, I don't know if they're willing to take a fifth round pick. Um, I don't know. You know. You know what's one thing I wonder? I wonder if they're willing to absorb some of his money, like the, the Panthers did to move Teddy Bridgewater. Because they yeah. kept they 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 had to keep half of his money. They had to pay for half of his, his salary. This right, year, get him off the How- roster. Now the Eagles are not desperate to move him. That despite what people think, they just want to get value for the player. To sum this up, they want value for the football player. They're not getting it yet, and that's kind of where it is, man. Again, nothing's really changed. How would that work from a salary cap standpoint? If you how how can the Eagles absorb? Because none of the money is guaranteed. So whoever Correct. trades for Zach Ertz is taking the contract as is. How could the Eagles then pay a third of the contract well, when he's not on? You can't just say, I'll pay a third of that contract and take it up in caps. It's not like. No, but you can. No, if you have it, no, you absolutely can. If, if you, if you, just like the Panthers did, they, they're, they're paying almost half of his uh, salary this season. The Panthers. But I the, thought that that was the half that drained into them because it was guaranteed money. When you I, trade a player, the guarantee. That money is true, but I don't, forward. I don't. Because remember the to facilitate the Panthers, the Panthers, the Texans, another expansion team, the Texans with um, with Clowney some years ago. Uh, I, I'll 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 find out for you. it's a fair question. I mean, fact, I, you may just have to redo the contract, right? Like kind of restructure it in a way so that you're absorbing, like you turn some money into guarantee. You almost redo it as a signing bonus so that that signing bonus drains into your own cap, and the team who's trading for him isn't taking it. Right, but again, I don't think my my sense is Eagles are not desperate to move him. Like the Panthers, when so you're willing to look, oh, God, yeah. I was just gonna say when you're when you're willing to take on money, like the Panthers should get the guy off the roster. They're telling you don't need to guess. They're telling you by doing that they wanted mm-hmm. the guy gone. Um, you know, they traded for Sam Bradford. So um, this one's interesting. The, the Zach Ertz situation. No one so trust me. The Eagles did not see him this situation. They felt that there was enough interest in him, and there was. Talking mm-hmm. to other teams, we talked about the Panthers situation at tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, before they signed Dan Arnold, they were involved with their situation. Mm-hmm. They just were not going to pay $8.5 million. I, I don't. This is so far back, back in March. I mean, this is like an eternity to me. So with all this stuff, right. which has happened since then. <laughs> so I, I don't remember exactly what they, the money that they're willing to pay. But fact of the matter is $8.5 million is a lot. And, and he's 31 years old coming off surgery. Yeah. It's a lot. How does this benefit the Eagles to have him on the team? From a continuity standpoint, not very much. I, I would agree with your assessment. I'll say any. I, Give me one. Any. Oh, well, he's a leader. I mean, from a from a player's respect, him. Of he's course, a leader. Of course. Yeah. No, I, I didn't mean it that way. I just meant like what would knowing giving you the context that they are turning the page, they are trying to go to Goddard, create a yeah. new environment and that he does not want to be here. That's a big part of it too. You know what? I, I It's funny you say that. I, mm-hmm. I'm not so sure about that. It's not like, oh my God, I have to, eat. it's not, this is not, okay. To respond to your question, this is not Carson Wentz. This is not where Wentz had it with a football team. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. Trust me on that. <laughs> I, I kind of have, a, I've had a ballpark idea of what's been going on here. It's not like that. Now, I'm not, am I am I am I saying he doesn't want a new start? No, I'm not saying that. The Carson Wentz situation, Wentz wanted out, and he he had it with the Eagles. He couldn't take it any longer. He wanted out. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is when people are saying, "Are you so sure about Wentz?" I wasn't in the beginning until I did some digging. To mm-hmm. you and I, really went in deep on this thing with Wentz. Yep. We had heard in February, like, "Oh my goodness, boy, did I not know this in the mm-hmm. season?" Yeah. And he wanted out in the worst way, and the Eagles didn't realize i don't think they realized it because the coaches the coaches as we noted months ago uh most of the coaches they interviewed thought that Wentz was going to be the quarterback right he wasn't so. right but to your point though about this not being same and not ruling out the fact that he would come back this hall started because he wanted a 
a, a, a more money. I mean, th- th- he wanted more money. He knew the other tight ends were going to get paid. He wanted to get paid. Too. Well, he so was he- also promised, just so you know. Right. The, when he was structured for the fourth time, he was told, as I understand it, that they were going to negotiate in good faith. Um, but I think the Eagles tried, but the problem is there's a difference between it was a structure issue mm-hmm. and getting fully guaranteed money for um, 2022. And he wouldn't get, they were not doing that. And as you said, and we all know this, Goddard's a future quarterback. Well, as soon as Goddard was drafted, we knew it was good. We, we knew eventually Urch was probably not going to finish his career as an Eagle. I, I think that was the realistic belief that people, just observers of this football team knew it. Right. Goddard's an all-around tight end. I mean, he's really gifted. I know he's, he's trouble staying on the field, but he has a chance. To, Dallas Goddard has a chance to be a top five, top seven tight end because he's so gifted. He just gets hurt a lot. Yeah, I guess I guess I what I'm saying is I struggle to see the sense of coming back to the team and playing under the same contract that you had an issue with at this time last year that has caused the two sides to be where the, where they are. Not saying it's all Zach. Oh, he's I mean, not if there was have one... a problem with eight point five, he knows now he's not getting an extension. That 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 that's long since gone. The question is, so it's like kind of a I didn't get what I thought I was gonna get. So I'm just I'm not even that. reporting now on that. I mean, it's just logically they're not extending. They're not extending what's Ertz's contract anymore. Obviously, it's not gonna happen. I know, but I there was a time where I think it was a strong sentiment that he would just not play out the final year of his contract if it wasn't. Yeah, redone. but here's the thing, though. Let me let me let me put it back to you here. I mean, it's eight point five million. You're not. I mean, I mean, he can't. He could. Sh- he, the, oh wait, let's move this forward. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He could, He's not going to sit. I, I get what you're saying. I yeah, mean, I mean, he could literally show up to train. Remember now. Dollars, right. Here's the thing now, because he doesn't have guarantees in his contract. There is no mandatory camp because he could have shown up to the mandatory camp. I'm sure he would have mm-hmm. because he would he get fined. And that would force the Eagles hand because you're not going to let a guy like who, who you're trying to move. Mm-hmm. You're not going to let him show up to, tr- uh, to mandatory stuff and get hurt because then they're liable if he suffered a debilitating injury. Right, you can't pay. They'd be, they'd be on the hook for the eight point five million. So yeah, no. Look, I, I like Zach a lot, and I think he's you know <laughs> done so much for the franchise, game winning Super Bowl touchdown catch. So I don't want anybody to listen to this and think I'm trying to kick Zach Ertz out of town at all. I'm just trying to say the reality of the situation is new coaching staff, new culture, new environment, younger tight end who you are who who just said in a Zoom this week that he and his agent have been talking to the Eagles about an extension, all right? So you're not giving Dallas Goddard an extension <laughs> and then playing him, his, you know, taking snaps away and giving it to, to, to Ertz. I just don't see – I I am not reporting. My feel is that that makes zero sense to me, and I think Howie Roseman has sense, and I think Nick Sirianni I, I, is sensible. Listen, so I, I learned my lesson when they kept Aguilar, who did, should not have been kept for nine, just over $9 million. Mm-hmm. But they didn't uh, have anybody to replace him with. I, I understand, but I just, he's not a $9 million player. That He wasn't then, okay? Right. He was not, he was a fading player. I'm glad he revived his career with uh, the Raiders, did a great job, got a really nice Frasian contract with New England. But going back then, mm-hmm. it's the value in the player. Like, like, for instance, I know people were saying, well, now teams have all this cap space, they'll trade for Ertz. No, it has nothing to do with it. You could give them 500 million cap space. It's what they value the player. Mm hmm. It's, he's not an eight and a half million dollar player right now. That's why he's not been traded. Right. No. That's people don't understand the cap, and it's all about how you value a player for you. Who's 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 when Zach Ertz is in his heyday, not only is he one of the best tight ends in football. Most I know he doesn't run. He's not a speed. He, the guy that runs better, as Greg Cosell's told us, mm-hmm. maybe the best route runner in the National Football League. Tight end, unbelievable getting open. But now at 31, how do you justify paying him eight and a half million? That that's if you're a club trying to take let, let's say you were a club that's looking at him, okay, Eagles, we'll give you a fourth round pick. But you also got to pay him eight point five million. Right. I mean, I think someone's gonna do it. I don't know who, but I mean I don't know I, that they're getting a that. fourth round pick. I, I, I thought that was that that was really what I was told that that was the they were never getting a third. It was nonsense. Fourth mm-hmm. round was fair market value for the player. But the but the issue then is okay, moving this forward here. Let's say we get to training camp, right? And then this this thing is not resolved. It could happen mm-hmm. at any time, but let's say it's not resolved, right? Mm-hmm. And they're starting to get there's some urgency here because around training camp, that's when you that's when you get got to get the situ- situation resolved. You would think theoretic, theoretically. Mm-hmm. Um, then is Zach going to want an extension? Right. New team. Right. Another, 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 no one's talking about that, but I do wonder. 
I do wonder. No, that's fair. Um, let's move on to Dell. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I know that he was been willing to play on an 8.5 million, but who wouldn't? Right. But if you're going to a football team, because if you're, let's say that the Eagles get a fourth, but let's say teams are willing to give up a fourth. Are you really going to give a fourth for a guy that's only on one? Uh, you're just going to will him, you're going to let him play it out and not resign him? I, I don't know. We'll see. Well, if he's not an eight and a half million dollar player, why don't the Eagles just cut him? They don't owe him anything. Because they, again, they want that comp pick, man. They want a draft pick. They see what value. What comp pick player. are you getting? The guy's going to sign a one year deal the next year, and you're going to sign somebody else. On you a don't know that. Deal. Come on, if, the, for the, if he's not getting money now, if he's not getting willing to have anybody pay him eight and a half million now, you think a year from now when he does okay for the Eagles as a part time tight end, he's going to get a three, four year? Well, hang deal? on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's put it this way, right? Let's say. I'm, just, I'm not, we're not saying he's going to the Bills, right? But let's, I'm going to use the Bills because the Bills didn't draft sure. anybody. Sure. Okay. And they've had interest. They, we know that. Yeah. But they have Dawson Knox, who I like, but he's, he's just not arrived yet. Right. Right. But let's say, th- let's say that, um, Earth, pl- let, let's say Earth's arg- uh, for argument's sake, is an Eagle this season. He plays the season out. Mm-hmm. He plays fairly well, right? Let's say he has 60 catches and he looks like the old Zach, close to it, not quite what he was, but pretty close to it. Who's to say he can't sign a two or three year deal for decent money with the Bills? And so, uh, and who's, I know it's I know it's a long shot. But I'm just saying. But like wh- that's what I'm saying. What comp pick are you? You think the Eagles aren't going to sign somebody for two or three years next off season that's going to negate it? Who knows? <laughs> that, that's my I, point. I, but, like, but is my this point really is this. the sticking up point for them? I, I just feel like I, I've, I've felt like all along that the the reason why you see people speculating the Eagles aren't going to give him away it's because the Eagles know that he's got value. The guy's a tight end. I mean, there are some teams of not. Yes, there are a lot of them, but there are a couple teams that did not fill out their tight end needs. So we'll see. Yeah, I guess I just don't understand the end game here. So uh, maybe I will down the road. All right. Um, we talked about Goddard. He he said yeah. he and his agent are having extension talks with the Eagles. So he's in an interesting position because he's a year away from free agency. So um I find players are, Adam, I don't know if you, you agree or notice this, but I feel like players are more willing to bet on themselves now more so than 10 or 15 years ago. Remember when the Eagles set the standard of extending a guy two years in? <laughs> now now you can't do that anymore. The battle they, roll. they would be like, oh, man, let me get this upfront money now. And if I get hurt, I don't have to worry about it. Then they'd be upset two years later when the market got reset. But I find that players are so much more willing to bet on themselves now when they have a year left and – you know, if they, they'll, they'll sign an extension, but it better be a, 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 a good one, not just a nice team friendly one, or they'll, they'll take their chances and see if they well, can get a big in free agency. Right. You're, you nailed it. That's exactly the way that I, I, I see this situation. Mm-hmm. I don't see Goddard signing a deal for $7 million a year. I see him signing a pretty, if he, again, I don't know if he's going to do it or not, but if he does, I think it'll be a market deal. I think mm-hmm. you're looking at, probably beating like a guy like could he know what a good comparable would be for me for him now i know goddard has not put together a full season yet austin hooper had one good season before he signed with cleveland it's like 10 and a half million for austin hooper right by the way it's Ertz's agent steve carrick who does a great job yeah well here's what happened cleveland was in on that deal mm-hmm. i mean uh, excuse me the no, niners the niners the i niners. reported that right yeah the niners were in big and i i was like why would I didn't understand at the time, but I know they wanted an athletic tight end because because not only is um, Kittle a great pass catcher, he's maybe the best block best blocker tight end, certainly mm-hmm. one of the top. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to move tight end like Hooper. So now you, you look at this situation; it's it's fascinating, man. It's um, got with, with Ertz on the team. How? Let me ask you this question: because mm-hmm. This is my number one question. How in the world could you do an extension with Ertz still on the team? You could talk that, about it, but I just made that point. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm that's why I say I don't understand what's going on here. <laughs> but you could, but okay, you could, you could literally say, okay, you could be Howard. Let's play, let's play role play here, right? We could go to um, his agency, Rep One, right? Uh-huh. Um, I Gattie. know, what, I know what you're about to say. Okay, yeah, let's look at Zach off the team. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking? Here's what we're thinking, right? Zach on the team. Here's what we're thinking, right? Almost trying to leverage Zach's presence to make Dallas want to sign a contract that might be team friendly. If, well, if you, you don't can't want to sign do it this, we moves. still have Zach here for a year, and then we can draft the tight end. You know, I that. And by the way, I'm not saying Roseman does this. That goes what you just said. I wouldn't blame anybody for doing it. Clubs do leverage the heck sure. out of players. Now they have a great relationship with Rep One. Um, mm-hmm. Although the when situation mm-hmm. happened, I'm told it everything's look. They don't hold any ill will. They've done so. 
they've had, they've had coaches on the Eagles rep one. They've had tons of players. Dillard is a rep one guy. Yep. Um, Ginger Ortega Whiteside's a rep yep, one guy. Correct. Um, they've had a lot of. They got players. a lot of them. Yeah. Nate Sudfeld was a rep was, one. Was yep, and is yep yep. You yeah. got a hundred grand. How the hell did he get a hundred grand signing bonus with the Niners? Are you serious? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. How about nice that? Job. By the way, I remember how we even said in the press conference after the 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 first press conference after the Wentz trade, he mentioned um, uh, Ryan Tolner by name. Said, "Hey, you know, these yeah. are the guys, and we have a good relationship with them." So, actually, um, by the way, really quick, mm-hmm. I'm wrong. Sudfeld got to it. I'm looking at his contract. Uh, you know, I I have all the stuff in my my uh, my laptop here. Right. I th- it's right because it's verified by a, a personnel source who has access to everything. Two hundred fifty-two thousand. He got t- fully guaranteed at signing. How the hell did that? What? Good for him, man. <laughs> I, I I love Nate. Great guy. But are you serious? Like, hey, if you can, what do the it. hell? I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. Good luck for him. Yeah. So anyway, to b- boil it down, you know, I do. You know, Dallas Goddard. Um, this will be a big year for him to uh, prove that he is. You know, yeah. he says he said it in his Zoom. He thinks he's one of the top tight ends in the. NFL, you just mentioned the market. It's what for top guys like Kelsey and Kittle, they're all making what 11, 11, 12 million a year. Well, Kittle set the market. He said it. I mean, it, it's he he reset it and blew it out of the damn water. It's uh, what did he get? 12 and a half or 13? No, keep going, brother. 15? Yeah, he did Got go it. 15, didn't he? Yep. Well, yep. well, yeah, yeah, it was a uh, Jack Beck did a great job on that contract. Right. That, uh, yeah, you know, good, good job at these agents, uh, Carrick and um. This guy back to who, oh, by the way, had Jermaine Mayberry, former Eagle. There you go. Um, yeah, but the point being, he's, he's Dallas Goddard's not going to get a 15 million. A no, year, but, but I if think Austin he, Hooper's making 11, then Dallas right. Goddard's probably like, I probably should be getting 11. He should be getting 11, right? I think he should, I think he should get right there. Now, it's mm-hmm. only, see, I, I think it's on your point. The only way he's getting 11 is if he plays this season on his final year. I can't imagine the Eagles are going to do 11. You mean the talks that they're talking about now are not at 11, right? I, I don't agree. know that yet. I, I, no, no, I, I'm I, saying that's like yeah. probably what you would assume or else it would be done by now, right? I mean, if they're offering 11, how how in the world do you turn that down? Exactly. I, exactly. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 know we'll know more. All right. Um, and now after these two guys, Goddard and Ertz, I mean, we've talked about the kind of who's who of, of kind of project tight ends between Jason Kroom and Caleb Wilson – Tyree Jackson, the former Buffalo quarterback, Hakeem Butler, who's all arms and legs, <laughs> and Jack Stoll. Jack Stoll, to me, is a guy that, you know, we talked about in a, in a podcast uh, recently, is, is going to be this year's kind of Noah Togiai, a guy that they really expect to compete to make the team and probably want him to make the team. They want him to play well uh, so that he can be on the team because they like him. So if Ertz is traded, right? Mm-hmm. Stall give not only does, does it give Stall a good chance to make the team, I would think they would resign Richard Rogers, who's the, the safety blanket for that position. That's my guy. I know, I know. Or yeah, yeah. He, uh, I would yeah. be great. That would be great if you went into the season with Goddard, oh. Richard Rogers, and Jack Stoll as your three, and then you have Tyree uh Jackson on your practice squad as a developmental guy, or even Hakeem Butler again, who I think would be eligible again. I mean, that 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 to me is an ideal situation. There's no one out there. Tyler Eifert doesn't block very well. Burton, Trey Burton is not, doesn't block at all. Jesse James mm-hmm. uh, would make sense because he can block. He's That's a stated. huge target. He's made yep. a lot of money. Yeah. Um, Richard would Rogers, you, Michael Pruitt signed with the Niners. There's no one else left. Would yeah. you interpret if they don't move to bring in Richard Rogers that they feel comfortable in Jason Kroom as their veteran, even though he's not no, a no. five or six or seven year veteran? They don't have any. No, he's. They, these see these guys at like Kroom, mm-hmm. Caleb Wilson, Hakeem mm-hmm. Butler, mm-hmm. are move tight ends. That, that means that they're not wide in in line. You're going to move them for matchups, right? Like Logan Thomas, who, what an incredible story. Mm-hmm. He's now he's learned how to block. By the way, he couldn't block it, save his life as when he was with the Lions years ago and all that. Mm-hmm. He's learned how to block. He's a at least a passable blocker, but he's you're you're trying to get him because he's so big and he's long. You're trying to use a guy like Tyree Jackson or Butler who are long. Mm-hmm. You want to get them on a linebacker, use their use their, their length or size. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. One of these guys is going to be on practice squad and stole to me, unless he just doesn't do well in training camp, will, will be their third tight end. Right. And this time they can't make the mistake of trying to pass him through waivers if he plays well. 
uh, because there will be preseason games this year. And so That's people correct. will have tape. <laughs> God. Yes. Yes. That'll be good. All right. So that kind of rounds out the uh, tight end picture. We did quite, this was a fun pod. I thought we, uh, we had some really good, interesting points to make. Um, I'm, I, I'm never going to understand or make sense of the Zach Ertz situation as it's currently going on, but you know, um, that's just, it, 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 you know. it's, we've given you folks everything we can. We, we, there's just, there's, there's a lot going on with the situation. The, the, the situation last year was reported is definitely true. There was bad blood. Mm-hmm. Um, I think NFL network put something out last year. Well, uh, something about a, an argument with Howie or a screaming. Yeah, I mean, look, but it's not just that. It's just that Zach has been such a great Eagle. He's done everything they've asked. I mean, restructure your contract four times. You could have told him no every time. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then I understand from an Eagle standpoint, they drafted Goddard there. I get, I've talked to both sides. I understand both sides. I totally get it. Yeah. I, yeah, the I, one I don't thing know I just how don't you, get you're, is... you're right. What you think you're getting like at this point, if you cut him, okay, you cut him, let him go sign with wherever he wants. I would, if you and I are running, I'm saying, let's, let's cut Zach. But you know what? They should have done it. As soon as they didn't trade him during the draft, which is before the draft or during the draft. Right. It's over. Just cut the guy. I would. Yeah. But I know they want to draft pick. So good luck. We'll see. Good luck. (laughs) Yeah. Great. They they, they seem to be hell bent as I, I just don't get the sense that they want to cut the guy. Yeah. Well, I maybe there is one months school months of thought. And if they're waiting for which has happened to them in the past, we'll close it on this. You know, somebody, somebody has a tight end that they like, who gets hurt in training camp. All yeah, of a sudden, why don't you wait? Yeah, that I can understand. I can understand it from that standpoint. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Big thanks as always to our producer, Hunter Brody. Check out his work on his YouTube channel. It is called Sports Talk with Broads. It's got a new website out too, broadsmedia.com. Nice. Check that out. And of course, he's on Twitter at Broads81 and at Broads Media. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the bird.